This week in IT, Microsoft adds Google Cloud Platform support to Microsoft Defender for Cloud. CloudNox helps organizations gain better visibility and management into multi-cloud identities and permissions. And the .NET Framework version 7 enters preview. Windows Update also gets a cameo this week in Netflix's Space Force. So following on from last week's announcements about AWS, Microsoft is adding Google Cloud Platform support to Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Now, if you remember back to last month, Microsoft announced this new product, Microsoft Defender for Cloud, which is actually a combination of two older services. So the Azure Security Center and Azure Defender. So what this service actually does is provide antivirus services, so Microsoft call it these days, endpoint detection and response, and advanced threat protection to your cloud workloads. So for instance, virtual machines and containers. And you get a whole load of other goodies in there like attack surface reduction and behavioral alerts and recommendations for operating system security baselines. And out of the box, you get 80 key recommendations that align with key industry regulations. So as we discussed last week, Microsoft is really starting to focus on the security aspects of cloud. And this is a good area for them because although Microsoft has never been strong traditionally in security, over the last few years, they've really upped their game with you know, things like Azure Sentinel and the general security posture of their products. Now, Microsoft has always been good at management. That's partly the reason why Windows is so successful in the enterprise. So I think if they can combine these new security features and extend them across the major cloud platforms, which they're already doing, so AWS and Google Cloud, of course, and combine that with their management expertise, you know, how do you actually manage all those security configurations and all the information that you get from endpoint detection so that you can actually use that information to stop threat spreading when they do occur. And I think if Microsoft are able to really nail this, then they can really grab a large part of the cloud space. Because while Azure, of course, is still a long way behind AWS, you know, the real key now for people to do business in the cloud, and one of the blockers for many organizations, is that they're afraid to really let their data be put out there into the cloud without the key protection protection that they believe they have at least in their you know own data centers so that's a battle that microsoft is helping to fight right now and it seems they're doing a pretty good job Additionally, with the announcement this week, Microsoft is claiming that they're the only provider that gives these security features across all of the three major cloud platforms. Now, Microsoft announced another security-related feature this week, uh, a new product called Cloud Knox. Now, they purchased this technology from another company back in 2021, and Cloud Knox is a cloud infrastructure entitlements management platform. So if you've ever tried to manage permissions, I don't know, on an on-premises file server or you know maybe across tens or hundreds of file servers or active directory permissions all this kind of thing you know how hard this can really be because you don't often have the tools to give you the visibility into where and how those permissions are actually set now of course all of those challenges translate into the cloud and what this tool is designed to do is give you a dashboard where you can get an overview of how permissions are configured across resources not just in microsoft's cloud but across multiple cloud platforms so you can imagine this tool basically gives that visibility into how permissions are set and allows you to close any gaps in your permissions. And of course, this is crucial in securing your cloud infrastructure. So it'll be really interesting to see how that actually works in practice. Microsoft also announced this week that Sentinel, which is Microsoft's basically their cloud native version of Splunk. So it basically allows you to collect your security logs, combine them into one data source, and then be able to analyze them centrally and to do that in the cloud. And this update to Azure Sentinel this week provides new log types and new search facilities to allow people working in security to more easily hunt for security threats in very large volumes of data. Microsoft also said that they're extending the ability to archive your security data in Azure Sentinel up to seven years. 
So Microsoft has announced a preview of the .NET framework of version 7, but Microsoft has said that they're basically going to make it easier for developers to develop cloud-native applications and deploy them to containers. So there's going to be streamlined processes for setting up and configuring authorization and authentication for applications. It's going to be easier to upgrade your legacy applications and make them work with the cloud. And there are also going to be a number of performance enhancements. And of course, just like everything else these days, it's all about the cloud. So of course, Microsoft needs to update their development frameworks to make it as easy as possible for developers to create applications that work natively in the cloud. Windows Update got a cameo this week on Netflix's Space Force. So I'm just going to leave you with a little bit of that right now. Uh, be careful because there is some strong language. If you found this video useful, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more weekly news like this. And I'll leave you with a little bit of Windows Update and John Malkovich. Seriously, you auto-updating now? General, I won't be able to calculate the right data for the satellite for... 49 minutes. How long till impact? 11 minutes and 44 seconds. Fuck Microsoft! Okay. Fuck!